What's our hotline question today? Hey, John, this is Santiago from St. Louis, Missouri. I remember when the Fast 7 came out, there was a lot of speculation or discussion about what to do with Paul Walker, and they ended up not wanting to kill the character off on screen because of how disrespectful that would be or how hard it is to have an on-screen death that is respectful. So I was wondering if you and the crew could come up with your theories or thoughts about how they're going to handle Chadwick Boseman's death on screen without it being disrespectful or seeming like they're just doing it for an entertainment value. Thanks, and bring on the trophy. All right, Santiago, thanks for sending that in. I mean, I still remember exactly where I was. When, when I heard that Paul Walker died. I, I was in Las Vegas. I was in Planet Hollywood. I was sitting at a poker table when the news came across my phone. And and, and I'll never forget where I was. I also ne- won't forget where I was when I found out that uh, Chadwick Boseman passed away. We were, I think you were with us, right? We were sitting in my living room and we were watching the new Bill and Ted movie. And, and then we all looked at our phones. It's like, Ch- Chadwick Boseman died. Now, Let's talk about one of the the big differences between the Paul Walker and Chadwick. And there are many differences, but but the big key one that was the difference between the Paul Walker situation and Chadwick Boseman was that when Paul Walker died, they were literally more than halfway done shooting that movie. I mean, they were already well into production on that movie. And that added an extra layer of complication. I'm not going to say it made it any more tragic. I'm just saying it added an extra layer of complication about how do we navigate this? And I remember... They shut production down. They they gather themselves up. They try to figure out how do we move forward with this? What do we do? I, I honestly thought the way they handled that situation, which there was no absolute right way to do it, but I thought the way they handled that Fast and Furious situation with Paul Walker was as close to the best possible way you could do it possible. They really did it right, I felt. It, it also, it, we need to remind ourselves too that T'Challa is not Chadwick Boseman. Right. They, these are two. One is a, is a character of fiction, of myth. One was a very, very real, dedicated, talented human being who brought a lot of joy to the world. But they, they are two different things. And when you say, you know, how do you do it without it coming across like you're just doing it for entertainment value? Well, it is the movies. I, I mean, ultimately, that has to be a part of the consideration because, again, we are not talking about Chadwick Boseman. We're talking about a fictional character in T'Challa. Right. But you raise a great question. They are saying in this movie that T'Challa dies. And, okay, that's one thing you've got to accomplish is decide making that decision. So they're going to say T'Challa died. How do you do it? How do you do it that is sensitive? I'm not going to say respectful. I'm going to say sensitive. How do you do it in a way that is sensitive to, you know, the millions of fans around the world who, who Chadwick Boseman became a beloved figure uh, playing this character and all that kind of stuff. I mean, like one option is you have the CGI black, you have earlier, early in the movie, a CGI T'Challa Black Panther in the full mask and costume in some kind of heroic situation and they tragically die. But how will, is that being sensitive to the audience ab- about feeling that? Do you, you want to see a CGI representation? I, and, and again, I don't have the answer to that question. That's why I don't make the big bucks. But it is going to be really, really challenging. I do believe, though, that it's going to be something like that. I I think it's not just going to be, you know, Ramonda picks up the phone and goes, T'Challa died with with nothing. I I think there's going to, for there to be any sense of closure, I think there has to be some sort of visual representation of it. And whether it's, a stunt actor in the Black Panther costume with with his mask on and they recycle some old dialogue that Chadwick had done before. I, I mean, I, I don't know. But it seems to me that it's going to, since it plays such a huge role in the movie, his passing, it seems to me they'll do something. I'm not saying we're going to get a full action scene where we see T'Challa die. But I, I think there's going to be some kind of visual representation. I think it's going to be in the beginning of the film. I think it's going to be done as sensitively as they possibly can. And maybe something that can also re-spark in us that sense of sorrow as then we move into this grand funeral procession scene and stuff like that. So I got a feeling that there will be a visual representation. It'll be early in the first act of the film and then they will move forward. But I honestly don't know. I mean, that's just my guess. Rob, you know, what to do with T'Challa at all is a huge question. They, yeah. they address that. They're going to have the character die. So now 
How do you have them die? Do you just do it completely off camera? Do you try to do a visual representation of it? It's a tricky situation. What do you do? Yeah, it, dude, it, like you said, it's really hard. I think there has to be some kind of representation of his death in the film. He has to, like, however, it might, it might not be what we thought it was going to be. It could be, I mean, you know, the thing about, about what happened to Chad Bozeman in real life, being struck down, being such a virile, you know, handsome, accomplished human being, and a disease that is incurable, that people have been fighting for centuries, to have somebody like him cut down in the prime of his life is inherently one of the most tragic things that can happen to a human being. And I, I think you have to honor the fact that somehow the preciousness of life needs to be conveyed mm. in whatever they're doing. And I don't think there's, a, I mean, you see this shot in the trailer. That goes a long way. You, yeah. you realize that, I mean, however. That's a shot you can literally just put on Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood and get the same emotion uh, yes. for people. Yes, and, and I think, I don't know what Ryan Coogler has in store for us, but I think that whatever that is, they have licked it they've accomplished what they needed to do and i'm confident that whether we actually see is we're gonna have to see some kind of a representation i would think from a storytelling standpoint to make it final because if you don't see it then it's like oh he could come back you know or something i think they're going to give us a definitive answer to this question and i think whatever they do based on what we see in the trailer it's going to be moving and it's going to be a fitting tribute to the actor but also as you pointed out it will make sure that we understand what's happened to the character right. in the movie. In this fictional world. Yes, and so I think that, yes, we're going to get some kind of a representation, an on-screen representation of what happens to Black Panther. And I think whatever that is, clearly in the aftermath, what the audience itself feels and what the people of Wakanda feel, you're going to have, it'll be a moment where the fictional reality of this movie will also spill over to the people watching the movie in the theater. And in a way, if they do their job right, we in the theater will be feeling what the people of Wakanda feel, which is something that not a lot of movies have been able to do, but I, I, I'm I, confident that they're going to do that in this movie. I don't know how they're going to do it, but I'm confident they will yeah, do it. Yeah, it's, 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 but like, uh, there's nobody, there is nobody. When you look at the way, particularly the way he handled all the stuff and, and the themes in Fruitvale Station, there is honestly nobody I trust more with this than Ryan Coogler. Not just because... He, he had such a personal relationship with Chadwick Boseman, but because of the type of storyteller he is. So I think he's going to do a good job with this. You know, I have to say also, when I watched Boseman's performance in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, he clearly was much more frail than we'd seen him, but it was a ferocious performance. Oh, yeah. And, and what he was able to do in that, I felt it when I watched that movie, because I think he'd already passed away when it, I saw the film. And I'm like, my God, this guy was a warrior till the end. And I think, I think we're going to get that from Wakanda forever. All right, guys. Question is for you. What do you think is the best way for them to go about handling the death of the fictional character T'Challa in the film, understanding its very real kind of connection to the real life person of Chadwick Boseman that was so beloved? How do you think they're going to handle it? Do you think they're going to try to be as respectful as possible? Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Guys, we want to take a second to thank the sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just 15 bucks a month. And now for the plot twist. I'm just kidding. There isn't one. Mint Mobile just has premium wireless from 15 bucks a month. There's no trapping you into a two-year contract or opening the bill to find all these crazy fees. There's no luring you in with free subscriptions to streaming services that you'll forget to cancel and be charged full price for. With my old wireless provider, every month when I opened the bill, it was like playing roulette. I never knew how big the bill was going to be and it always seemed to get bigger. With Mint Mobile, it's totally different. I know exactly how little I'm paying every month and there's never any surprises. Mint Mobile gives you the best rate whether you're buying for one or a family. And at Mint Mobile, families start at just two lines. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. And guys, you get to use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. So transferring over couldn't be easier. So to get premium wireless from just 15 bucks a month and no unexpected plot twists, go to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. You'll make your wallet very happy at mintmobile.com slash campia. 